Hey, good morning and welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. <clears throat> I always clear my throat where I, before I start and it seems like <clears throat> I gotta do it again. Must be a nervous thing. <clears throat> well, I think we have that out of the way. <laughs> welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me here today as always. Today's topic is going to be the big picture. The big picture. What is the big picture? The big picture is what you can't see. The big picture is what you can't see with your five senses. And therein lies the problem. We judge by our senses. Never, never, ever judge by the evidence of your senses. Well, I suppose if someone has a gun aimed at your head and they're pulling the hammer back to shoot you, you may then judge that you're in trouble. <laughs> but I'm not talking about those kinds of situations. What I'm talking about is when you have a vision or a goal and it looks like and all evidence points to the fact that you're never going to get there. <clears throat> Facts are malleable. Facts are created. Facts are envisioned. Facts are only facts because we make them facts. The limitations you set are the limitations you have set upon yourselves. You are only limited by those. It's your choice whether you want to view the evidence of the senses or view the evidence of the idea and the vision within yourself and your mind, if you like. If you hold on to that vision <coughs> with tenacity, pursue it with perseverance and persistence, that vision will eventually manifest itself in your outer world. And if not, something better than you could have imagined. Because you can't see the big picture. What you think might be the answer to your prayers, your dream life, may not be it at all. But you have to have something to head towards to guide you to that exactly or to something better. Because if you sit on your ass in a chair behind a computer screen or your phone screen or Xbox screen or TV screen all day, guess what? How is anyone or anything or anybody going to guide you? You can't be guided because to be guided, you have to be moving. To guide someone means to pull them or, or guide them or move them in a certain direction away from where they're at. At least that's my definition of it. The Webster de definition may be a little different. So what happens a lot of times is we get paralyzed by the evidence of the senses. Read the histories of some successful, famous people. Many of them were ridiculed. Many of them were laughed at because they had an idea and a vision that, time, that the time of that vision had not come. <clears throat> but within their minds, within them, the time had come. The vision was a reality, but it had yet to manifest in the outer world. It had yet to be created into a physical reality in this time-space reality we have here. And people laughed because they said it couldn't be done. The four-minute mile right there, the greatest scientific minds of the time or the greatest doctors said that if a man run faster than a four-minute mile, he would die. It was humanly impossible and he would have a heart attack. Roger Bannister broke that barrier. Now, where was the barrier? Was it in the physical limitations of man? No, the barrier was in, within the mind of man. Once that barrier was broken, within that same year, two more people broke that record. And now high school kids break that record. So what was once thought to be humanly impossible from a full-grown man with the greatest athletic ability now is done by high school students. Young men, some people, teenagers they call them. It used to be young men before the 50s, and then we have teenagers. That's a whole nother deal. Rite of passage. We need some kind of rite of passage with young men so we can have men instead of young boys in their 20s and 30s. It's another topic. <laughs> Back to the vision, the big vision, the picture, the big picture. So when things aren't looking like they're going your way, Know that they are if you're moving towards something. What doesn't look like or what looks like couldn't possibly help you to achieve your goal. 
Maybe it's character building. So when you do achieve your big dream, that you have the character to handle the pressures and the responsibilities and maybe even the fame of it. How many people have you seen who have become overnight successes, which they probably, it probably wasn't an overnight success, but rose up really fast. They fall on their face because they don't have the character to handle the pressure, the responsibility of having millions of dollars, the responsibility of having notoriety, the fame, the status and all that. You have got to have the character, but most people don't want the character building. They just want the success. And some people get that. And when they do, they crash hard. And they end up worse off than they were before they ever started following their dream or their vision. You have to accept the character building the same way as you accept muscle growth when you go to the gym. You go to the gym and you got to hurt a little bit. I mean, myself, I would rather take a beating. And I've taken a lot of beatings as a professional and a for, former professional amateur boxer. I would rather take a beating than take some of the character building beatings that I've had in my life. But looking back in retrospect, I can see how valuable they were because the abilities and the, the influence or power, I'm not really sure how to say it, that I have now, had I had that same um, power or influence 10, 20 years ago, I would have used it to get my way. I would have used it wrongly. I would have tried to use it to force people to do what I thought was best for them and myself. And that's not ever the way to go. To go with the flow of life is the way to go. To allow life to unfold before you and to flow with that. It's like going down a river. If you go downstream, it's much easier. But to go upstream, it's very difficult to row against the power of the current. You have to get in rhythm with the power of the current, the current of life, the current of God, the current of divinity, of the universe, of nature. However you choose to view that aspect of, of living. And then when you do that, when you're in flow, when you're you know, in flow, athletes talk about being in flow. I have been in flow before. Where you don't think, you just flow. It just all comes to you and it just happens. I remember one time I was in the ring with this guy he was like number one in the nation as an amateur. I was still an amateur boxer then, I believe. Uh, and this guy was just, he was so smooth and fast. The only reason he never became a champion, or because he turned pro, he had like eight, eight and I was a pro. He get, he get cut, he was a cutter, he got cut really easy. He even had the operation, so he wouldn't get cut as easy, but he still got cut and then he ended up getting some kind of a herpes or something on his face where he would blister out. Yeah, but he was a great fighter. I worked out with him quite a bit. I was never afraid to work out with him because he had whatever he had. I never got it from him. But, I mean, when you're in the ring, there's blood, there's spit, there's all this crap. You can't be a germaphobe and be in the ring. But that's off the topic. The point I'm making here is I remember one night working out with him, and it was just, and he was so fast and smooth. But this night, it's like I slipped every one of his punches, and I rolled around and come back up and countered. And it was like, I still remember it because it was so... I don't know how to explain it, but I was in flow. And I've had many times in my life when I've been in flow in business and different things where everything just flows. There's no resistance and you don't have to think about your actions. They just flow. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but that. So being in flow is very important, but to be in flow, you have to accept things as they are. And whatever is happening, no matter how terrible it looks, it's happening for you, not to you. And the reason you can't see it in the moment of crisis or turmoil or anguish is because you can't see the big picture. But there's a part of you, the God part, or whatever you choose to call it. I always say that because I'm not a religious guy, but I believe the religions have offered many good things throughout the centuries. And there's been some bad sides too. Like everything else, it's neither good nor bad depending on how it's used. Thinking makes it so, as Shakespeare said. Nothing is neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. And we're thinking when we're in the middle of this crisis, this turmoil, this anguish, this whatever it happens to be, that this has got to be terrible because we feel terrible. We cannot see that anything could be possibly brought out of this, but more problems. But that's the problem. We can't see the big picture. We can't see it. It's like when they had these riots in Ferguson here in St. Louis. 
the news focused in on one city block and it was turmoil and fighting and rioting, okay. But there's a whole city, thousands of city blocks where nothing, where there's peace. But they don't show that. If they would have zoomed out and showed the big picture, you would have seen that most of the city was peaceful. 99.9% .9 of the city was peaceful. But yet when I traveled out of the country, I would talk to people and I'd say, man, things are really bad over there in the U.S. at Bryant's and Ferguson. But it was just a small, and that's just comparing it to the city. One small block in a block of thousands of blocks in the city. That's not counting the country with hundreds of thousands of cities and blocks. But they focused on the one negative, pessimistic problem that was going on. And thus made it look like it was some giant thing. Because they weren't showing the big picture. They were just showing a small little part of it. And that's what happens in our lives. When things go bad, we focus on the bad thing that's happening at that moment. That's where if you looked at your whole life, this is nothing compared to how your life has gone. If you're still here, you've been fed, you've been clothed. At least if you live here in the U.S., you have been, and other first world countries. So what I'm saying with this message is, remember, when you're in the, mid when you're in the midst of a crisis, stop and realize that all successful and great people have gone through the same things, but they didn't stop, they kept moving, and they tried to see the good in it, because it's there, but you have to look for it. The negativity jumps up in your face like a, like a monster. You can't miss it. But the positive part, the good aspect, you have to search for it, and that takes effort. All right, like and subscribe now. I hope this has been of value to you. Share it with a friend. Thanks for joining me, and if you'd like to get my help personally, you can contact me on my website, marksinspiration.com. Have a great day.